Okay, our next topic is going to be coagulopathies. And basically, any disorders in coagulation or platelets is going to predispose patients to bleed. Now, coagulopathies are going to have either an increase in your PT or your PTT, like we're going to go over right here. And our thrombocytopenias are going to be when we have abnormalities in our platelets. And thrombocytopenia is actually going to be defined by platelet counts that are less than 90,000. So let's start out by talking about coagulopathies. And we're going to start out by talking about um, factor deficiencies such as hemophilia A, factor 8 deficiency, hemophilia B, which is factor 9 deficiency, factor 11 deficiency, and factor 12 deficiency. We're also going to talk about von Willebrand's disease and the lupus anticoagulants. So basically, if we have the PTT increased, with the PT normal and the platelets normal, I want you to think of either factor 8, 9, 11, or 12 deficiency. And if in the history, the patient comes in with this cluster right here of only an elevated PTT, and they have no bleeding, I want you to think of factor 12 deficiency. For factor 12 deficiency, there's no bleeding, so there's no treatment necessary. If the patient comes in with an Ashkenazi Jew background and they don't really have bleeding, you're going to be thinking of factor 11 deficiency. And our most high yield is if the patient comes in with an elevated PTT with normal platelets and they have hemarthroses, hematomas, GI, or urinary bleeding, I want you to think of hemophilia A or hemophilia B. Now basically, both hemophilia A and B are X-linked recessive disorders, meaning that they only uh, result in diseases in males, and females are just going to be carriers of the disease. You're going to see a prolonged PTT with a normal PT, and basically a factor deficiency is going to be suspected when you do this mixing study right here, and the PTT drops to normal. If it drops to normal, we know there's a factor deficiency, but guess what? We don't know what factor it's going to be. So we actually have to confirm this diagnosis with specific factor levels because the mixing study is only going to tell you that a deficiency is present. So basically what we're doing is that we're going to take the patient's blood and it's going to be mixed with a normal control. And the PTT is going to be dropping to normal. We know it's a factor deficiency. We're going to confirm it with specific factor levels. And we're going to replace the specific factor that's missing. Mild hemophilia A can be treated with desmopressin, also known as DDAVP. But remember, desmopressin is not going to work for hemophilia B. And if there's severe bleeding, you can use fresh frozen plasma. If we did the mixing study and there's no change in the PTT, there's going to be an antibody inhibitor of the factor present. Okay? So we figured out that if we have a PT normal, PTT is increased, platelets are normal, and they have hemarthrosis, hematoma, GI, or urinary bleeding, we do a mixing study, we're going to figure out which factor deficiency is absent, we're going to confirm it, and we're going to replace the factor, and in mild disease, we can use desmopressin, okay? Now, if a patient comes in with a platelet type of bleeding with this cluster, so the PT is normal, platelets are normal, and the PTT is increased, but they have a platelet type of bleeding, meaning they come in with epistaxis, petechiae, vaginal bleeding, bleeding of the gums. If you see this cluster right here, I want you to think of von Willebrand's disease. And basically, you're going to have an um, increased predisposition to a platelet type of bleeding because of a decreased amount of von Willebrand's factor. It's going to be an autosomal dominant disease that's the most common congenital disorder of hemostasis. And basically, um, it's going to result in a decreased ability of the platelets to adhere to the endothelial lining of blood vessels. So basically, they're going to come with epistaxis, petechiae, bruising, and women are going to come in with menstrual abnormalities. If you see these symptoms with a PTT that's increased but a normal platelet count, think of von Willebrand's disease. And a key is make sure you look for the question if it may say uh, the bleeding time is particularly increased after the use of aspirin. So you're going to suspect this and you're going to do a test called the Ristocetin platelet aggregation test. And um, if this Ristocetin platelet aggregation ex uh, test, which is going to examine the ability 
of platelets to bind to an artificial endothelial surface, which is this Ristocetin. If this is abnormal, you've made your diagnosis of von Willebrand's disease, and you're going to treat this with desmopressin acetate. And if DDAVP is not effective, you're going to do factor eight replacement. You're going to remember that FFP is not going to be useful in this disorder. Um, a clotting deficiency, PT normal, PTT increased with platelets that are normal. If it's a clotting deficiency, I want you to think of, if it's clotting deficiency and it's VDRL positive and FTABS, fluorescent antibody negative, I want you to think of the lupus anticoagulant, anticardiolipin antibodies, antiphospholipid antibodies, and I want you to diagnose this with a Russell Viper venin test, okay? And basically you're gonna see a prolonged clotting time. And if the patient is asymptomatic, there's no treatment that's necessary. And if there's a history of thrombosis, you're gonna do long-term warfarin. Now, remember, acute thrombosis is gonna to have to be treated with at least six months of therapy, and it's not written in here, but basically, there's indications for lifelong warfarin in these patients, okay? So if a patient comes in with this clotting right here and any of these problems, and you've confirmed it with this test right here, indications for lifelong warfarin include more than two spontaneous thromboses, antithrombin deficiency, antiphospholipid syndrome, spontaneous life-threatening thromboses, as well as thromboses in an unusual site such as the mesenteric or cerebral vein. So lifelong warfarin in patients with over two spontaneous thromboses, antithrombin deficiency, antiphospholipid syndrome, spontaneous life-threatening thromboses, and thromboses in unusual sites such as the mesenteric and the cerebral vein. So basically, that's the coagulopathies with this cluster right here. We just discussed, we just discussed hemophilia, hemophilia A and B, factor 11 deficiency, factor 12 deficiency, von Willebrand's disease, as well as your lupus anticoagulants.